Hello and welcome to the Rusal live stream for February 28th, 2022. My name is Nicholas Giverson with Rusal Education, and I'm so excited to have you all here watching today. We have one of my favorite educators that we have on the team, ambassador all the way from the UK, Paul Taylor Clinch. I'm going to go ahead and throw it to you, Paul, and have a good show. If you have any questions, let us know. Drop it in the comment box below. Let us know where you're watching from and all that wonderful stuff. Again, if you have any questions, write them in the box and I'll throw them to Paul. Enjoy. Hi guys, I'm Paul Taylor Clinch of Pirate Force on Instagram, and I'm the Technical Director of Education for Europe for Rugal. I'm super excited to be here with you guys tonight. Um, we've got a fantastic model today, so we're going to showcase some really cool looks. We're also going to go through some like techniques and how we identify certain aspects of the haircut. Because like you may see that say like that you may say that you've seen a pond for loads of times. But today we're going to really break it down the actual structure, working exterior with interior, just to give you a bit more of like a broader understanding of if you've seen us cut it a certain way a certain amount of times and you might not know exactly why certain things have happened so instead we're going to go into a bit of like angles weight distribution uh texture we're going to go with tension on the hair as well so we're going to be breaking it down as much as i physically can in case we have any sort of like new balance or people that haven't really tried as much of these haircuts before so we're going to get right into that and break that down for you today a uh, quick one before we start there, obviously we're all devastated to hear about what's going on in Ukraine at the minute, so our thoughts and our friends are with everyone there, and we do wish them the best, and hopefully we we'll get everyone will get sorted as soon as possible, um, but yeah, you have our full support here at Black Sales. Uh, so guys, like normal, I've got a bit of the blue tonic in the hair, and we're going to water down the hair because as much as we love our Rusal, I know for a fact Nick does as well, who's hosting today. Congratulations on his new job, by the way. Uh, as much as we love our Rusal, the first product that we need to work with is water. Because what water's going to do is help us identify how the hair's naturally going to fall, or how it's going to fall with any product in it. Because whatever we can do with water, our Rusal is just going to enhance uh, what we're actually going to be styling. So, a basic, basic way of finding your baselines is coming from the uh, lowest point of the hairline, coming across the head, and coming up through the side, like that. But if you get a bit worried that that's too much hair, or you're a bit like, I'm not sure about moving it out of the way so much, Literally, just like I say, come across the front of the hairline, turn around, and basically draw a line. But how are we doing tonight, guys? If you let us know where you're from, where you're watching from. And if you watched Liverpool beat uh, Chelsea last night, you can let us know that, because I watched it. I thought it was a great game. So we have our baseline, and what you may have seen is people coming up and out with their flipper over comb work, and uh, you might not understand the angles or why we do it. So basically what we're trying to do is reduce weight and length, and the way to reduce weight and length is you pull 90 degrees from the hair's natural growth pattern. So it's not just the shape of the head, it's from the growth pattern of those hairs coming up. So if we're coming up through here, 90 degrees, you can see where the hairs are actually sitting there, horizontally across the comb. So that is what we're going to go for today. But I'm just going to do it with scissors. Literally, no different. Same principle, just different technique. So coming out 90 degrees off of the head, Obviously, because this is reducing weight and length, it's a great start for our baseline. Because what that's doing is we're treating our baseline as fundamentally as the transition between our style, so the cool hair on top, 
and say the boring hair slash fade hair slash bit on the sides. <laughs> and what I think as far as we don't do enough of is we don't reward ourselves as we go. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is basically we've all had it at certain points where we might, if we do 10 acres a day, we really like five, three are pretty good, and two, we know we can have done better. So I feel like we need to ourselves as we go more. So what I'm going to do is after I've just cut my baseline, this is a backward style, so I'm just going to brush the hairs backwards. Now, if you see that, just from that baseline area that I've cut, if I brush this backwards, it's already blended through. Can you guys see that all right? And we enjoyed that so much, we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So again, coming from the front hairline, I was going to cut across, so across. Following it around the head shape. Okay, guys, grab me. Coming up 90 degrees from the growth of the hair. Because that is, like we said, that is going to reduce both weight and length. Paul, we've got a question. Sure. Simon Butcher asks, are your fingers tight to the head and why are you opting for scissors as opposed to flipper over comb? So my scissors are just off. Uh, my Sorry, my fingers are just off, not too much. But if I stand here, I'm not going right on his head. But that is if we were going to go for like a higher sort of fade. But I'm literally, because his head, naturally rounds off quite high that's why i'm just leaving a little bit of extra length to play with i can get rid of it later on so that's why i said i'm just going right fingers to the head i'm just coming out just ever so slightly so if you imagine because the baseline area isn't going to change if you have a long trim or a flat top or a side part the baseline area does not change because that is that ridge of the client and, uh, or customer that's in front of you. The only difference is how far out you're going to come from the head. So because like I said he has quite high prior ridge, uh, I'm not going dead short here. I'm just leaving myself a little bit of extra wriggle room in case I need it. And why are you opting for scissors? I said. Uh, so for scissors, uh, no, like I said, literally it'll do the same job, just different technique. I'm doing it because I think with scissors I can work just a bit more precisely with my work. So if I was say doing it in a shop and it's like a sort of like straight, then I would probably opt more for um I'd probably opt more for clippers. But as today we can do a nice relax, break everything down as much as possible. Then I don't need to basically. So what I'm doing now, guys, is I'm just going from my growth pattern at the back to the growth pattern at the front. Now, some say oh, that means just going for a profile parting straight down the middle, but it's not. What I'm actually doing is I'm following that round of the head from his dominant growth pattern at the back, which is obviously his crown. But even if his crown was well over here. And start from there coming forward. So I'm using growth patterns now. I use, like, say, the skull structure to determine, say, the baseline area. Now I'm actually using uh, the growth patterns. This is why uh, every client that we do, even if we're doing the same haircut all day, every day, because every client's head shape is going to be different, every client's growth pattern is going to be different, we can actually make sure that every client is going to have something different, even if it's the same haircut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow this through 
to the fall of the recession because I want to protect my front, my style. I want to protect it. So I'm going to save it for later. That is the reason I'm doing it. Uh, like I said, guys, because I wanted to break down today. You may have seen us do this haircut a few times. But I want to break down the steps for you to understand why we do it. So we started with our baseline. And now I'm going to do the back area, but I'm all sectioning it from the apex bone. Yeah. So you can see here where the hair is like heavier here and it's coming down over my baseline or at the front here. But these hairs are going like again beyond my baseline area and it's quite heavy. So if we think in Barbara, we work with three fundamental shapes, a square, a circle and a triangle. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So if I was going for a very heavy square shape, i would brush everything across and just connect it to my baseline down here. What that's going to do is create a very heavy square shape uh, with keeping a lot of weight. So what I'm going to show you today is the understanding of mixing all of those shapes in together. So to start with, I'm going to come from the corner here and I'm going to elevate because if we elevate above 90 degrees from the growth pattern of the hair, what that's going to do is soften it. It's going to reduce a lot of weight. So around the corner of the back here, I'm going to elevate up. It's natural guidelines. When I say natural guidelines, I mean the skull structure, the shape of the head. If I elevate this back corner up past 90 degrees, you see that short bit there? That's going to be that guide. So I'm just going to come through and I'm going to follow that diagonal section around. And then to horizontal at the bottom. So that section we went above 90 degrees because we know that's going to reduce a hell of a lot of weight. Make it more spherical. Yeah. Now, this middle section here, I'm going to come to my chest. So nice and square. I'm going to follow this around into the baseline. I've got my baseline underneath, but now I'm making a squarer shape. So we're just coming 90 degrees out from its natural growth. So the square section here, and then the spherical one there. What that actually does. As you can see, that alone is softening that back area. If we compare both of those back areas, you see how much softer this side is compared to this side? And we enjoyed it so much, we're going to do it again. So again, I'm going to elevate past 90 degrees up towards my chin. There's my guide. I'm just following that from diagonal cutting to horizontal. Now, like I said, the only reason I'm doing this today, guys, is I'm showing you the reasons why we take certain sections. I'm showing you we're doing this to achieve this. Uh, so, you, like I said, you would have seen us do these haircuts a lot of times. So today, what I really wanted to do is just make sure everyone's on the same page and everyone understands it. So if next week. One of our educators say does this haircut as well, and they're going to do the sections that we teach at Rusal. Then you're going to see it why it works and like the methodology behind it, understanding those shapes. Again, so that side panel here, I'm just going to come out to 90 degrees because, as we know, 90 degrees reduces both weight and length. And if I brush that back now, nice and soft. Making sure both my sides are nice and even. Uh, 
and fantastic. Cool. Remember, I said there's three shapes, so we've only done two. So it leads us to a triangle. So if you saw when I was doing those sections as well, I was having maximum tension on my fingers. Whereas now, I'm going to be doing the opposite. So I'm going to come to where the hair falls in front of the ear. So where the hair falls in front of the ear is also the squarest point of the head. You'll see that's why when we start our base lines, where we have our clipper over comb, we'll start there because that's the squarest point of the head. But here, this is going to be, for pompadour, this is going to be the focal point, the visual point of our style. So I'm going to go for as little tension as possible. Find where we left off on the side of the head there. And I'm just going to basically just cut this asymmetric look, retaining as much length as possible with very, very little tension. I'm not pulling down on my hair. So what that's doing is if I now hold this shape out versus this shape, we've created a triangle, yeah? So if you think what we've done already, working on only the exterior of our haircut, we've gone from spherical back, it's a squared at the sides to a triangle. I mean, that might sound like a lot of information, but again, it's just giving you that understanding of why we'll do those sections. You would have seen them before recent videos where we're sectioning out this sort of middle piece here. That's basically just giving you an understanding of why we would do that and why we choose to do that. So again, guys, when the star starts to move, I'm just going to bend so it rests those hands on my fingers. Just because I want to retain as much length as I can, but with as little tension as I can. And there. So you see it's already looking blended. It's already looking like it's got shape. Now, the top, this is where the interior of our haircut, this is where it all comes down to personal, personal, personal choice. You can even come straight up and just do a traveling guide, no problem. Uh, you can do a profile section, no problem. I'm going to work on a profile section because for me, it just helps me to secure uh, is it the shapes I want to create. So if you think about the top of a pompadour, my client's hairline naturally descends like this, yeah? The growth pattern following the skull structure of his head. It's descended. So what we want to do with this look is counteract that. So again, if I put this here, we've got ourselves another triangle. Yeah, so these images are going through my mind, these shapes, these lines. So I want to create, basically, a triangle here, square here. I want to come out here to protect that crown. I don't want to chop it off. These silly sausages. And then we're going to come in here at the back just to protect that as well. So in, out, shake it all about. I'm sorry, so I'm just carried away. So, so we're going to come out here, out here, square, triangle through the top. So I've created my profile section. And then what I'm going to be doing is just going to start at the back here. So I'm going to come in. So I'm going to find that longest point, that shortest point attached to my baseline. Then we're going to be coming directly up and out from the crown. See our previous cut section. We're going to come straight across here. And now this fringe slash style. We're going to be doing that descending angle. And then we're going to check ourselves. So we're just going to come all the way back through. And guys, any questions at all, please do let us know. If you are confused about the lines, about the shapes, anything like that we've put in for the exterior of the haircut, please do let us know. 
because it's fun to watch, but you know, make sure you get the most out of these as you can. I'm going to be coming up, keeping a square shape at the very front. Not much is going to come off, just because obviously we wanted to retain as much as we could. Again, here, following my profile section backwards. Now, when I get past the ear, instead of keeping that squareness here and making that traveling guide for out, I'm conscious of the fact, remember these corners here at the back, we made spherical, yes, yeah, so it's softer. So as I get past the ear, instead of bringing it up to that middle point, our next section, we're going to be coming out. So we're actually going to remove the corner. around the back area. There you go, so coming up through at the front, making sure everything is nice and square, lifting it to my profile section. And then when we get past the ear, we're abandoning that, and we're taking the corner in. So everyone understands though why I've chose to do that. So you can see everything is soft coming through from that baseline area. Cool, 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 cool. What I'm gonna do now is just section out that style. And I just want to make sure that all my lines are connected to my baseline. Now we've done the top and we've done the interior of our haircut as well. Has many of you guys been able to try the digital concrete? If so, let us know what you think of it. It's definitely one of my new favorite products we've launched. Uh, huge fan. All right, guys, what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of grooming tonic in, and I'm just going to be loosely blow drying so we can prep the sides just to eliminate some of the moisture you don't have to especially with modern clippers you don't need to dry it out to get clippers for it anymore but just when i like make it saturated the hair with water i'm sort of putting it up on the sides especially if we're doing like any paint work hey paul we have another question uh, simon butcher asked at what point when you were coming back did you go round and how far back did you keep sweeping? I was doing square into the ear and then from behind the ear, where is his ear there? Then I was going round and taking off that back corners here just because I want the squareness of the hair to be at the front. And how far back did you keep sweeping? Around the shape of the head. So, slash grooving tonic. And you can see, I'm just making sure I'm getting a nice even coverage. And the tunnel, so the main hand's gonna wipe it on my trousers. To blow dry easier just to like get rid of the moisture like that right now i'm not setting a style i'm simply just removing moisture from the haircut all Uh, 
But like I said, guys, today, cut in the top, I wanted to just basically make sure everyone understands that if we were, if you've seen a video and we've pulled all the stuff down to our baseline, what does that create? So like we've explained, so obviously when you pull the head down to a certain point, it's just going to take off length, but retain the weight. If you elevate it to 90 degrees, it's going to reduce both weight and length, but keep squareness. And if you elevate above 90 degrees, then you're going to lose the squareness, but it's going to take a lot more weight out. So now that you're watching these videos, I really hope you can understand the difference on where our educators are pulling their sections from. So you can see here, before we've done any of the clipper work, our style there blend in perfectly into our base area. We have that round softness there, more squareness here, and a lot of the length still through that top, that square shape. So there is a method to the madness, I promise. Like I said, a lot like a right now. I'm just trying to get most of the moisture out of the hair before we do our flip away. Beautiful. A question popped up, but it's gone. I can't see it anymore. Sure, Nick will let us know. So I'm going to start with the number three and I'm going to go to my baseline. I'm not going to push it up, I'm just going to go to it. And then we're going to work down just so it gives us a nice finishing point. So again, I'm just following this around the head, removing the bulk, the hair that I know I'm not going to need. Does that question come up? It only shows for a couple of seconds and now it's gone. Camera does add 10 pounds. I'm secretly very skinny. And uh, camera's fine. Not my partners, not the treats. Hey, Paul. Oh, Nick. Hey, I'd I'd ask the question while you were blow drying just to fill some space. What people's favorite product for blow drying was? Was it the grooming tonic, spray grooming tonic? To let us know what their favorite product was, and a lot of people are saying the grooming tonic. Uh, Spray grooming tonics and fiber gels. So we've got a variety of what people like to use. I was just asking a question. Oh, amazing. Uh, okay. That's really cool. So yeah, grooming tonic is huge. It's extremely popular here in the as well. My, my favorite usually is the spray. 
only because it's uh, 70 percent give or take give or take the consistency of the pouring version obviously it has to be slightly more diluted to be actually put to a spray four but it's also like you, i find that you don't actually need that much green tonic anyway so difference would be maybe extra squirt uh but yeah i really like it it's less messy um this is really popular so at the minute my favorite is i want to go yeah, i'm gonna go with concrete because i've been using that the most recently so guys i'm just gonna zip from five feet on my bike here and you can see where i've done my baseline and then where this is slightly not resting my fingers directly on the head it's still pretty much blended everything in but it's done enough to give me a solid guideline uh, it's not been stopping me going in right now and getting tighter but for me this second in time that's tight enough i can always finalize and finish the haircut uh, as we get near but for me i'm really quite happy with how everything is sitting right now so it's a bit too much i'm going to go so i started my 0 0.5 i'm going to go with my number one now closed and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go about seven minutes now i'm a huge huge fan of these fabulous slippers the pro fx but I'm mostly impressed with Bablos just for having the click lever. So let us know in the comments, do you prefer the click levers? Do you like the smooth lever? 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 Either? Either. <laughs> so, and then to fade out that number one, guys, I'm going to do two clicks. One, two. And we're going to adjust underneath that number one. Then one click. Down to one click, I should say. And then close. So that is the fade done. Now, why do I say that's the fade done? Because now what we're actually doing is working on the blend. So if you imagine the fade, to me, the fade is where the hairs are horizontal. Where the hairs are horizontal, you can see through them. You can see through them onto the skin. Therefore, what that's doing is you might have heard a client say it before. Oh, because I have a skin fade, I have to get it cut more often because it grows out. It doesn't grow out faster than if you have a three or a four. You're talking a load of rubbish. The difference is the hairs being horizontal, so you see through them, and vertical, so they can lie on each other, and therefore maybe appearing that it's getting thicker quicker. So now I'm on my blend. So I'm gonna do, I've done my three. I'm just grabbing the guard lead. Sorry about that, folks. So I'm going to, there we go, but I'm going to start with my number two all the way open to go just underneath my number three. Hey, Paul, while you're doing I'm that, I just wanted, to, just wanted to let you know we have viewers from london we got canada us brazil france mexico and thailand in the house watching with us today oh, wow, viewers from all over the world everybody checking in oh Everything's thanks for watching great. guys we appreciate it sorry i went traveling with these tools and i bent them in a suitcase so that's why i have to make sure i actually hold on to it otherwise it's going to pop off so two clothes My one and a half guard fully open. My one and a half guard closed. My one guard fully open.
then half open or two clicks. Close. Now, some of you might be wondering why am I only doing one part of the head? And it's very simple because, like I said, guys, we want to reward ourselves as we're going. We want to have that fulfillment, that enjoyment, that sense of achievement through every haircut. And then why not have it every step of every haircut as well? So that's why I do one column at a time. And you can see here that pretty much fully blended in. I'm literally got so little refined work to do because I've just followed my system. I've done my fade, which to be finished was at that number one guard. Done my blend down to my fade, and now I can move on. I'm then going to be standing, and we'll try and do it. So I'm not in the shot, but you see here. Am I in the way? Time it. Oh. Make sure I can see what I've done before and what I've got left to do. So I'm going to go in to the other half. I'm going to do my number one. To my half guard, open it up two clicks. One, two, go just underneath my number one guard, then drop it one click, and then close. Right, that's the same as the same that I've done. Let's see if this two wants to stay on or pop off again. Oh, oh there we go. Right. Two open or two and a half, either either. Number two close. One point five guard all the way open. One point five guard close. Number one all the way open. Half open. Close. Right, you see how that flows together now, both of those sections? Now we can move on, do it again. Does anybody else fade like this? Or do you just go around the head? Or do you do both sides and then the back? Or let us know what you guys do in the comments because I always think it's so fascinating and interesting to hear, especially how different areas of the world uh, approach things differently. Right, I'm going to a little bit. You're going to be moving on to that side, because so I'm not in the way. Paul, while you're doing that, we got some people chiming in. Scott McKee says he fades in the same manner, and Dexter. Gooch says, I like doing one side at a time as well. Ah, there you go. Awesome. See, it is. Right. So before I move on to here, the rest of it, where I was doing my um, finger baseline, said really well. But here, it's just a little bit heavy, and I don't want to lift that higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refine it before I move on. So I'm just going to soften that a little bit now. Like I said, because I was pulling my fingers slightly out from the head anyway, and not holding them on the head, it gave me that bit of wriggle room anyway. So in case I didn't like something, 
the morning so it's best to do there and then and then move on because then like you're confident and the work you're leaving behind is good work so again guys number one So my half guard, open two clicks. One click. Closed. As much as I love these amazing bags, getting the So going to my two and a half, just through my back slide, going above it, just going to number two closed. My 1.5 got all the way open. 1.5 got closed. So you see, by having this method of even failing and treating it as a I see by not too slow. It's not like ridiculously fast as if you were guard skipping, but it's a lot more controlled, consistent way of working. And ultimately, that's what we all want, especially from our clients. Our clients want us to be as consistent as possible. So by doing that and having that understanding that's what they're going to make them keep coming back. Having that understanding of, right, if you really liked how you did the haircut, why did such a self? Why did I like it a lot more this time than maybe when I've cut that same client five times previous? So you want to be constantly assessing yourself. So I'm just going to do a little bit of refining, a little bit of scissor over comb with my Scorer Masters. Also, it has the black sales logo in it as well because i'm very bougie slash cringy and i'm just softening that transition I'm going to let that bit block now. So you can already see that silhouette is really looking amazing. Like I'm actually getting super excited. When I see how everything is fitting together, does everybody else get that? When you just get like super excited about a haircut? But I'm not, I kind of forgot when I was on film then. I was just quite happy enjoying myself. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do now is scissors. Now, people say, oh, they're from filling out, they're just for bulk removal, but I'm actually going to use them to accent hair. So, because obviously the sort of visual point of this haircut is the front, that's what we want to aim for. To accent that, what I'm going to do is section that away. I'm going to drag these sections down and get horizontal. And then as I move up into the style, I'm going to go into uh, sort of more sort of like uh, slicing. And then because the blades on the Rusal Mitsutanis are curved, it's allowing me to do that slicing without pulling any hairs. 
So I just want to make sure you guys can see that there. If I just grab all of that hair. Absolutely no pull, no resistance at all. Again, so I'm just coming up through my transition at my baseline. And then as I get into the interior of my haircut, I'm sort of going for more slot of slicing. And what that's doing, you think of that knock-on effect. If I'm reducing the weight heavily everywhere else part the fringe or the style, what that's going to do is everything's going to lie that little bit softer apart from that style. Uh, but yeah, please, uh, we'd love to know what you thought of today. Uh, if it was like being back in primary school or kindergarten and learning about shapes and what does what. But I was hoping that gives you guys a bit of insight as to maybe seeing us do these seven sections. But now you can actually see and appreciate maybe what we're actually looking at while we're doing these haircuts, yeah? Okay, with my trimmer, I'm just going to do a rough line up. So I'm conscious of the time, and uh, I just want to make sure we get the style in as well today. While Paul is finishing up this haircut, let us know what product you want to see him use to define this shape. Let us know below in the comment box. I know you guys got suggestions. Yeah, we nice. want to hear them. You've got, I'm going to give you three minutes. You've got three minutes to get as many in as possible. And if we like a couple of them, I'll even cocktail them. Because who doesn't love a cocktail? Oh, shit. How are you doing, chat? So we had uh... Paul, I want to let you know you got some feedback from Xavier. He says, I will try this baseline with scissors. I feel more comfortable. Perfect haircut. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much. What products are we thinking, guys? So far, I see one suggestion from Scott McKee. He says, I'd like to see the concrete. Concrete it is. And here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so I'll just start with a little bit. Literally a fingernail to start with. Applying it to that pen. This is simply a personal choice because I love it when you can break down a product with the heat and then when you set it with the cold dryer, then it just helps everything set a bit nicer. So it is literally a personal preference. Putting products in 
my blow dry the hair and I lift it into that style, I can spend more time blow drying, making sure uh, everything is set how I want it. Because the last thing I want to do is do an amazing blow dry, then I have to put product in it and then recomb it again. So you can think of it almost as like saving you some time as well. This last smidgen. I'm uh, just really emulsifying it within the hair. Uh, very professional me. That's a lot of trousers. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start blow dry with the exterior and then work internally. Almost how we cut the hair. So people might think, why to do it? Why don't you just make sure everything is blow dry first? It's because I want to make sure things set at different points. So I'm going to do one side of the exterior, then the back area. I'll spin it around so you guys can see, and we'll do the opposite. Yeah, and then working the interior of this slide here into the back, and now I'm going to show you. Now we do exactly the same on the other side, but just so you guys can see how I've how I've done one side and then how to do the other. see that so again i'm working external externally into internally it's actually hard to say and then we're softening the back as we go and then saving the front to last so what i'm doing is i'm trying to keep basically the air in a central position and i'm just moving it with the head So work in the exterior. Into interior.
Paul, we got some questions. Yeah. Scott McKee asks, is the concrete a little harder to get spread evenly through the hair when the hair is dry? Mm, if I'm being honest, I generally don't know the answer to that question because, like I said, I uh, I put the products in when they're wet, when the hair's damp. So I would say uh, test it. <laughs> Let us know, basically, is the answer to that one. The best uh, answer I can give. Nick, have you got an idea of that at all? Um, me personally, I don't feel like I have too terrible of a time trying to spread it through the hair if I'm using a pick after application. It just oh, it steps a little bit quickly, so you have to move pretty fast. It yeah. steps quickly, um, so you just gotta move fast. Yeah, no, if it's after application, not at all. This is literally gliding through. So, but if I just go like here, though, guys, can you see? those three shapes that we've made here. So we've got spherical, we've gone square, and then we've got a triangle to create that curve, that elongatedness at the front. I like the concrete because it's one of those. You can go like super soft and have those still those beautiful brush lines. Or you could just put loads and loads in and it still looks good. I'm definitely jealous of Lee's hair and his hairline. Put it that way. All right. So. This is my pompadour, my fake pompadour haircut. You can see the fade there blends beautifully into the sides, beautifully into our baseline area. All of those lengths attach and are fluid through our hair. And we've got that nice, beautiful, soft finish with our new roots of concrete. So, listen, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, I do really, really appreciate it. And I know there's terrible things going on in the world right now. So for you guys to spend your evening watching me do a haircut is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Uh, but no, like I said, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've understood uh, or got a level of understanding now with our haircuts on how we like to process thoughts. Like, I wouldn't necessarily section like this every time. It was mostly just to show you guys an insight into why we maybe would do our sections the way we do. Why? maybe why we elevate things, why we don't elevate things. So I also hope this has given you a good insight into how we love to work at Ruzel. Thank you so much for using our products and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Feel free to check in with us next week as we have more education most Mondays throughout the month. Uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram at Ruzel. Facebook, YouTube, like and subscribe, all that wonderful stuff, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.